lovely viewers and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight we are streaming chapter 7 of The Royal Romance, book 2. If you haven't joined me before, welcome! I drink and I cuss. If you want to play the drinking game along with me, the rules are right here underneath the player at twitch.tv slash aromanticace for those of you watching the VOD. I myself do have an inebriating beverage of which I'll be partaking this evening, and I remembered my tissues this time. Um, so, <clears throat> hopefully that will no longer, no longer be a problem. Also, if you haven't joined me before, welcome to this book where apparently everything's made up and the characters don't matter. Uh, <laughs> so we are a New York City waitress who was trafficked to the Western European country of Cordonia because we were the waitress at the bachelor party of who turned out to be Crown Prince Shamar of Cordonia, except he didn't know who he was marrying yet because apparently, uh, apparently when the Cordonian heir, heir or heiress, I assume, to the throne has to, has to get married. Well, if they're going to take the throne, they have to be married. This is the first problem. This is like, I'm, I'm having Princess Diaries flashbacks with that one, but also the way they pick their, their spouse is by um, going through one social season to get to know everybody and then picking them kind of bachelorette style. It's it's basically considered a competition. So um, we made it all the way through that social season. We, uh, <laughs> we endured masquerade balls and ice skating and skiing and, and fancy derbies and, and tea parties and sexual assault. That one was fun. And then at the last minute, someone released photos of that sexual assault. Of course, it all became our fault because we're the girl. And we were nearly deported at the end of book one. In fact, book one led on like we were going to be deported. So book two begins. Our sponsors have managed to keep us in the country, although we honestly didn't have a visa, it seems, to get into the country in the first place. So maybe that's why they tried to deport us. I don't know. But... Yeah, now we're basically set up as Shamar's Madame de Pompadour because he's engaged to someone else but is still in love with us and she said she's cool with him seeing us behind her back but then she's acting like she's not cool with it and she needs to actually, like, this is the problem is you need to communicate what you are and aren't okay with in a relationship and yeah, I get that she's not in love with him or whatever but my god, like, say words. Um, <laughs> and, and so let's see. The end of book one, we kissed Hannah, because why wouldn't you kiss Hannah? She's honestly the only not horrible person in this entire book so far, including us. Um, and then last time, I kissed Drake, because I was kind of feeling like an asshole after, after Shamar continuing to try to string us along as Madame de Pompadour, even proposing that we continue in that role after he marries Madeline. <sighs> no. Like, but yes, yes, we are now a horrible person because we've gone around and kissed like everyone we could kiss. I I assume maybe if we'd have been more like aggressive in pursuing Olivia, maybe by now they would have let us kiss her. But I think literally everyone we've ever had the option to kiss, we have now kissed. So huh, we're, we're sitting on a high horse here with Shamar when really we have no right to be. But with all that said, we'll get started with chapter seven. So in chapter seven, it says, at Madeline's bachelorette party, will you be able to uncover the identity of the suspect? Because right now we have one clue telling us who, who paid someone to take the photographs. We met the photographer. We know someone was paid to take the photographs and we have the last four digits of a credit card number. We also know that it was, quote, one of the noble ladies, according to a maid at the estate where this happened. So, our job now is to basically try to get everyone to take out their credit cards so we can see the numbers on them. I, let's hope nobody used a, a prepaid credit card or anything, you know, and been smart about it. But let's go. Let's see if we can resolve this absolutely horrible plot of it's cheating, but it's not cheating. Ha! Right? Yeah. 
We've, we've done everything else. We may as well go ahead and commit identity theft now. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's in the pursuit of true love. It's all okay. No, it's not. Do not ever steal identities in the name of true love, kids. J just don't. Just don't. Okay. Chapter 7. Girls Night Out. Oh, this is going to be great. I can tell. Okay. All right. Let's go. Here we are on the train car where we're going to get murdered someday. All right. Justin, our PR manager, says, Contess Madeline invites all of Cordonia to glimpse her bachelorette celebration. Oh, God, just... Can I throw up yet? Ugh. Justin reads from an issue of Trend Magazine while you and Bertrand listen. Yeah, we found out Bertrand tried to sell us out to the tabloids in the first place with photos from Shamar's bachelorette party, confirming that he is, in fact, a horrible person not necessarily meaning that he's committed serial murder, but at this point we're not putting it past him. It's been our theory from the beginning, so I'm sticking with it. The events of the evening will kick off with an exclusive photo shoot and interview with the queen-to-be and her party. Can I not? Can I just... Can I not? What do you say to that, Kira? I say this is going to get super awkward because at some point isn't the doctor supposed to come stumbling out of my fireplace? Like, seriously, if I'm going to be Madame de Pompadour, I need the benefits. I need the benefits, y'all. Somebody please take me away in a TARDIS. I say, so we can say, party, which would mean Maxwell's been rubbing off on us. We can say, of course Madeline wants her bachelorette party to be a press junket. Or, can't she just get drunk and dance on tables like a normal person? There's there's no way to get around being judgy unless we want to be just like a complete airhead, so take a drink. Although at this point, as far as I'm concerned, it basically is just a party because... We're not going to find out who the suspect is at a bachelorette party. Y'all, there's like no ethical way to do this. Of course, there's not going to be an ethical way to clear our name anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. So, I guess... <laughs> of course Madeline wants her bachelorette party to be a press junket. The concept of fun is completely lost on her. No, sweetheart, it's a political move. We know this. What? You don't think artfully navigating and sub subverting the subtleties of interviews designed to paint you in an unflattering light is fun? Holy crap, Justin. You need a hobby. Like, try knitting, my dude. I... Oh, dear. Okay. Huh. Suit yourself. Lucky for you, it's my bread and butter, and I'll be there to help the whole time. Cool. At some point, you're gonna, like, get rid of that suit and we're gonna see a giant red and yellow S on your chest, right? Because no part of me believes that you actually need those glasses. Madeline invited you to her bachelorette party? I mean, you know. I wish. <laughs> Do you now, Justin? Is there, is there, is there a reason? Are, are there going to be male strippers, Justin? Is that what you're in for? Because, like, we need some more rep in this story. We can't be the only ones. No, we'll have a bit of help from this. He reaches into a pocket and pulls out a tiny device, which he then offers to you. If this is not the noisy cricket from Men in Black, then I want no part of it. Absolutely none. So we, we have no choice. We take the tiny device, which is clearly a Bluetooth earpiece. It's an earpiece. No. As long as you wear it, I'll be in your head. I No, that is not the way to sell this, Justin. My man. Mm -mm. Nope. No, thank you. And that's a good thing? This is a... Yeah, no, it's not. If you want to impress Anna DeLuca, it is. You know what? No, I actually did a pretty good job of impressing her in the last book, so I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want you in my head. Don't forget about the investigation. Yeah, Bertrand, I haven't forgiven you yet, buddy. Mm. <laughs> As if I could. It's literally the reason I'm here now. Be on the lookout for any openings to... Hint! 
identify the lady's credit cards and compare that number to the last four digits of the card used to pay the photographer. Okay. Hopefully I'm good with numbers. I wrote it down here, lest you forget. Yeah, that's not going to be suspicious. I'm just carrying around this, you know, four-digit number. No reason. No reason. It's, um, it's my pen number. I can never remember it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. He gives you a slip of paper which reads 6547. 6547. 6547. Okay. Do, 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 do. We'll remember that. No, we won't. And Kira, perhaps this will be hard for you to hear, but you can't rule out Hannah just yet. Um, excuse you. My, my, my strange serial killer sponsor. We are leaving Hannah out of this. Do you know why? Because she's set up as one of our potential love interests. And if this is in fact a romance, which I'm doubting at this point, because um, this is not how romance actually goes. We are owed a happily ever after with her should we choose it. It may be a bad happily ever after compared to what we are supposed to get with the prince, but it is supposed to be a happily ever after nevertheless. So, no. I really don't think that our international vampiric assassin who loves heart-shaped marshmallows, Hannah, is the one who's setting us up. Okay? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. What? We can say Hannah would never betray me. Why should I suspect her? Or, of course I'm not ruling her out. Um, no, Hannah would never betray me. You shut your mouth. Be pragmatic, Kira. Fuck you. You were being pragmatic when you sold me out, so I don't want to hear none from you, Bertrand. She is a noble lady with every bit as much motive to remove you from the picture as any other. Maybe, but she had no motive to set up Madeline. And that... That there is the problem, is that these photos were released specifically to put Madeline in power, because similar things were done to Olivia. I know, so much betrayal recently. But yeah, Olivia was set up too to remove her from competition. So, it stands to reason that the two blackmailers are probably the same person or working in consort. So yeah, Bertrand, go away, you moldy bowl of old porridge. God! She actually does not have a very good motive. I guess unless she's trying to get us for herself, but I think Hannah is smart enough to know that's not how you start a relationship. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, not you, Bye Beetle. It's fine. Or have you forgotten that her future rests on her success in court? Her future rests on us getting her away from her parents, who are abusers. So, yeah. I can't believe you would even suggest such a thing. I am merely suggesting that you find evidence to rule her out. We have to be sure. Hmm, okay. My, my evidence is how well she kisses, but you know. Who do you suspect most? <laughs> uh, damn good question. I mean, like, the obvious answer is Madeline, which is why I don't actually think it's Madeline. To be honest, Penelope seems like the one, because as much as I adore Penelope, I think she's absolutely wonderful with the poodles. Um, if you're gonna pick, like, one of the ladies who was traveling, known to be traveling with us at the time, um, yeah, Penelope, just because she's she's kind of the dark horse in that, but I'm, I'm with Risa here. My... Suspicion is actually Adelaide, Madeline's mother. And I say this because, like, the first time she met us, she was super buddy-buddy to us. And, you know, oh, darling, you know, so glad you're back at court after that whole scandal. And, you know, we're standing with Maxwell. Oh, don't you make a darling couple? Like, so clearly trying to subvert the fact that we ever had any claim to Shamar in the first place. So, yeah, Adelaide at this point is at the top of my list. She also stands to benefit from Madeline being put into power because then she is the queen's mother. So, I'd love a thing like this that's building up to a plot twist and it turns out to be just who you thought it was. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? But that's probably not what it's going to be. It's probably going to be somebody we haven't even met yet, frankly. 
that would that would be what I'd do, but whatever. Hmm, and Madeline's mother isn't even on this list. That's interesting. Um God, do I want to be a jerk and say Penelope, or do I want to go with the obvious and say Madeline? Because I don't suspect Olivia, believe it or not, because as Olivia left, she actually said, for God's sake, don't let Madeline get her claws into him. Like, that was probably the one astute thing that Olivia actually said to us before she left. Or, or yeah, or it was Tariq the whole damn time. I'm also in favor of this theory, although I consider it slightly less likely. Um, but yeah, these are the only people I can suspect. That's... Yeah, Kiara is more cunning, but I wonder if that's just because Penelope is a better actor. I don't know. It really probably doesn't matter who we pick here, so so why not? Let's go with Kiara. <laughs> but who could be the Cordonia killer, says Bertrand with blood on his hands. <laughs> hmm, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. So let's let's suspect Kiara. Why not? She's entirely too perfect. It's highly suspicious. Yeah, she speaks, what, like 10 languages? With any luck, we will know for certain by the end of the night. I don't know, dude. We're like halfway through this book. I don't think we're going to get answers that quickly. Anything else I should know before I get going? Uh, just one thing. <clears throat> Madeline asked each of the ladies in her court to plan an activity for her bachelorette party. Holy God, don't you people think you could have told me this, like, before I'm getting ready to leave? Ay ay ay. And I'm just finding out about it now? Shocking. Hey, genre savvy! I haven't prepared anything. It could, like, the queen is also actually on my list because she's xenophobic. Um, especially, a, like, right when book one ended, before we had met Adelaide, the queen was at the top of my list. And now, because the queen is known to be friends with Madeline, to boot. Um, and Madeline was previously engaged to Shamar's brother. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's part of why, like, if I'm, if I'm honestly picking anybody, it is a close race between Adelaide and the queen. I had forgotten about her because we haven't seen her for several chapters, but yeah. Yeah, the queen is also a good suspect. The plan is murdering her. Yeah, probably. Of course you haven't! And why should you? You've got people like me to do it for you! Oh good, is that why we're paying you? Thank God. Huh? Bertrand had me conduct some market research, and I've picked or I've prepared two options for you to pick from. You have VIP reservations at the two hottest clubs in town, an underground lounge, and a rooftop night spot with a pool. Oh god. Just say the word and we'll lock in your plans, including ensuring top-level security for the event. Yeah, top-level security was also at Applewood Manor, where we were assaulted and photographed, so... <laughs> I feel like that's not actually your god there, Justin. Yeah. I say, I think we should go to, so we can go with the underground lounge or the rooftop pool. Rooftop so the snipers can get her. <laughs> <laughs> Ay ay ay. Um it's as good as any it's as good as anything, so let's go with the rooftop pool, because it probably doesn't matter. Sounds posh and relaxed, and also like any of us can jump over the edge if we decide we cannot take another second with Madeline any longer. They probably have parachutes. Great choice. Were you going to tell us anything different? Suddenly Maxwell bursts into the train car, toting a fuzzy wriggling bundle. Uh oh. Puppy or kitty? What is that? I, I, it's your face, Bertrand. <gasps> it's a corgi! And corgi says, Arf! He's so cute! A corgi! Oh my god, do we get to name it? I was taking an afternoon walk to stretch out the detective muscles when I came across this little guy all alone on the sidewalk. Oh no! We, we cannot, we cannot have lost puppers! 
He looked so sad. No, puppy! Don't make me give him to Madeline. No, with the sad puppy eyes. Oh my god, you guys. Y'all. Oh, 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 sorry, Reese's cat. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have earned probably the the death glare of the kitty there for a moment. <laughs> Maxwell, I stole a dog. Yes, but look at it. Oh my goodness. No. But then I walked up to him and he said, "Hi Maxwell, please take me home and love me and play with me every day and I promise I'll be your best friend." Oh, I know I need it. Look at him! No! Dogs can't talk. Yeah, well, Bertrand, you know what? You actually don't get to speak anymore either, so shut up. We're keeping the dog. He said it with his eyes and his wiggling tail. I guarantee y'all this is a diamond choice. Guaranteed. I've always wanted a little buddy like this to play fetch and tug a war with. But my parents said I had to settle for Bertrand. <laughs> He's a prince trapped in human form. Smooch him. You know what? He can't be any worse than anybody else. Even if he's a she. Because I don't actually trust Maxwell to know how to determine the sex of a dog. So, um, yeah. This is the smartest and the cutest and the best dog in the world. Can we keep him? Please? Moldy porridge can't talk, and yet here we are with Bertrand anyway. Exactly! Do you have any idea how much it costs to maintain those things? We're already scraping the bottom of the barrel to pay for Justin as it is. You know what? Shut up, Bertrand. Just, no, don't you, don't you ruin this. Look at his face. No, with the eyes. Y'all, I can't. Look at Justin's face. And he doesn't need shots. Hey, you don't know that. It, is Justin actually up to date on all his vaccines? He hasn't said anything. And we're crossing international borders. I feel like this is a valid question to ask. Are we even up to date on our shots? Because we flew out with an hour's notice. I realize that Western Europe isn't usually the place where you need to have like a lot of specialized vaccines. But no, this, this is a question that needs asking. Um, actually, if you tell me that your parents were hippies who wouldn't let you get vaccinated on principle, I will actually break those glasses, Justin. That will, that will happen. Please tell me you aren't in need of vaccinations. Ha! Huh, uh, not that. It's the dog. He isn't a bad idea. People love people who love animals. And look, it's... He's already practiced the cute face with the big sad eyes, and oh my god. This could really endear Kira to the press. I'm seeing a centerpiece in Trend Magazine already. Yes, look at this dog that we stole. Yeah, the owner's gonna see this and be like, oh, that's my dog, and then we're gonna have to pay hush money to keep the dog, and I, I see this going badly, but... I did hire you to help me, yes? Not to contradict me and spend what little money I still have on this frivol frivolity. Y y Dude, you literally hired an expert and you're not going to listen to him? Well, what if I take care of him? What if I take care of him? Sorry, wrong emphasis. Yeah! And you would pay for his food and... Litter or whatever it is he needs. Oh my god, dude. Watch, watch like three episodes of anything on Animal Planet, please. Just, oi. Yes, yes, no, no, look at, look at, look at this face. Look at, I can't do it, I can't do it. Oh, and it's only 15 diamonds, y'all know. We're adopting the corgi. Stop with the, take sad face away now, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take care of Justin's shots. Yeah. I'll take the very best care of this little guy. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off Reese's cat again. Woof! What's his name? He doesn't have one. Guess that means you get to name him. <gasps> oh no! I've gotta 
gonna name a dog. Okay. Um. But allow me to submit Sir Wigglesworth for your consideration. My dude, that is entirely too much name for that dog. Look at this dog. The name is bigger than the dog. I'd suggest Chance. Oh, okay. The cat was out of the room. All right. Okay, good. Good. Every time you say his name, you'll remind people of your benevolence in rescuing him and giving him a second chance. Okay, I'm not I'm not particularly enamored of the name Chance. Like I get it, but um I doubt that's like actually going to get us anything. Um what are, what are, what do we want to name the puppers? What do we want to name the puppers? What do we name a corgi? God, I haven't named a pet in so long, y'all. Hmm. We we can we can name him. Apparently it's a boy. We've we've determined, I suppose, that it's a boy. So we can name him. We can name him. What's a good corgi name? A good like scout playful name. See, now now I'm mad that my internet is so slow because I could just, like, go look something up. But I can see if it'll perform. That's actually not doing horribly. Oh, oh my god, there's a list of 130 plus brilliant ideas for corgi names. Oh, good lord. Okay. Okay, I've heard Boots suggested before. I'm not sure he's a Boots. It doesn't he doesn't look like a Boots. Baxter's not bad. Rigby, Cody, Buttercup. Cody's not bad. <laughs> Low rider. <laughs> I'm not naming him P with Smalley. What the hell? No. Um let's see. We, we could name him after a knight of the round table. We could name him Gareth or Gawain. Um, Llewellyn, which is entirely too much name for the corgi, and also I can't pronounce that old sound. <laughs> Pembroke or Pem for short. Hmm. Ol oh, Oliver! Oliver, like Oliver Twist. Yes, he is Oliver. There you go. There you go. He is Oliver. Arruf! Okay, he likes it. Yay! <laughs> Lewis. Lewis is a cute name, too. I love it! Oliver of House Beaumont. See, just Beaumont by itself is entirely too much name for that dog. So we adopted a corgi! Yay! I think you mean Oliver Roth of House Beaumont? He is rather cute, isn't he? Says Bertrand, one over now that he knows he doesn't have to pay for it. Your cat is cleaning your hair. Well, as one does, I suppose. As long as you aren't footing the bill, you can appreciate him, huh? Precisely. You should be off. You have to meet the other ladies for the first bachelorette event. I know of at least two reimaginings of Oliver Twist in the world of sex work, and I have no idea why that's so popular. I mean, actually, the story doesn't translate all that badly to sex work, so my guess would kind of be because it's just easy to do. But, yeah, hmm, interesting. You carefully insert the tiny earpiece and nod. Bertrand's smile does look like he smelled something bad, and I'm sorry, but his shocked face just scares me because his jaw doesn't move, and so it just, like, consumes his chin. It's really creepy. Everybody's does, but his looks especially bad. Ready. In these clothes. You enter a chic Italian boutique. Oh my god, it's a different boutique. And find Hannah already dressed, sifting through racks of gorgeous dresses. Yeah, there she is in that gorgeous silver dress. Hi, Hannah! 
Kira, I'm glad you're early too. Hannah, you don't look like you need to be shopping. The dress is amazing. I'm just lucky I already had something that fits Madeline's metallic theme. I'm looking for you. Oh my god, we brought Oliver! Woof! Puppy! I'm sorry. <gasps> is that a puppy? I know, right? She, lo and she looks really good in it. Like, she actually gets something flattering put on her body. It's nice. A delighted Hannah claps her hands and bends down to scratch Oliver behind the ears. This chic Italian boutique has let us bring in our dog because I guess they just don't argue with people when they come in because they assume we're rich and we're going to, like, destroy their their reputation. <laughs> it's -a me, Fashion Mario. Yeah. Who's a good little doggy? Is it you? Oh my god. Huh? Oh, you put your poppers. I'm gonna say that every time, yes. <gasps> yes, it is you. You're the good doggy. Oh my god, she's going... We're not gonna have a choice. We're gonna have to marry her because she's gonna adopt Oliver. Ruff, ruff. I'm gonna laugh like hell, by the way, if I can get my neighbor's downstairs dog... Or my downstairs neighbor's dog going. My neighbor's downstairs dog. They have an upstairs dog, too. No. Hannah stands and turns to you with a gleaming smile. Uh-oh. We've made points. <gasps> I'm so excited. I've never been to a bachelorette party before, but I did a lot of research. Um, let me stop you there. It's going to be lots of drinking, and that's all that matters. It's literally all that matters. Hannah, who's a good doggy eating the thousand dollar merchandise? Oliver! Oliver's the good doggy! I watched all 13 seasons of The Bachelorette. Holy crap, Hannah, when did you have time for that? Goodness. Did you just skip to the end? The Bachelorette? That's... The show's a little different than an actual Bachelorette party. Yeah, for one thing, usually the guys, if they're there, are, like, actually stripping. Yeah. I spent all night planning my date. We're going to have a cho we're going to a chocolate shop to have fondue. Oh, well, this is true. Since we're doing, like, events, it kind of almost is more like the show, because we're basically taking her on dates, aren't we? Hmm. There's a thing I didn't necessarily need to realize. Hannah, we can say, that sounds really lovely, or your date. No, we already know what she's talking about. That sounds really lovely. I'm sure Madeline will love it. I hope so. It's not going to matter because we're going to love it. Though I'm not sure when I'm supposed to give her the rose. Oh, oh, honey. Oh, honey, no. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> Or is she supposed to give me the rose unless I get eliminated? Oh, oh, honey. See, this is why we need to get you away from your parents. Because you have at least some idea, I think, of what a bachelorette party is if you had seen, like, any, any media ever. Ever. Hannah, you realize this isn't a THE bachelorette party, right? Uh, it isn't? Oh, thank god we're here. Okay. Whew. Before you can answer, Madeline, Kiara, and Penelope enter the shop, their hair and makeup immaculately done. I know, she's so innocent. Ah, you're already here. Excellent. I notice you're not wearing a metallic dress, Madeline. If you're honestly going to enforce a theme on us, just go, go fuck right off. Fuck all the way off. I told you all I cuss. Penelope spots Oliver, and her eyes light up as she breaks into the widest smile you've ever seen. <laughs> Yay. <gasps> may I pet him? Of course you may, Penelope. Even if you happen to be the one who set us up. Of course. Penelope extends a hand gingerly, offering it for Oliver to sniff. He licks it, and Penelope giggles. Woof! 
<gasps> Aren't you a handsome little gentleman? Are we quite finished with this? What's the matter, Madeline? Are you jealous? It's okay. Oliver can pee on your shoes. Good boy, Oliver. <laughs> Lady Penelope has so kindly arranged this private shopping excursion in the most exclusive boutique in Italy, and I don't want to waste it. Well, good for you. To that end, everyone should select a metallic dress. We should all shine tonight. Oh, fuck you. Mmm, very classy. Are we actually going to get to see them change clothes now? I called ahead and put, had them put aside all of their metallic options. Thank you, Penelope. That's very considerate. Penelope leads you to a rack of sparkling dresses. Madeline and Kiara each select a few and head to the dressing room. A moment later, Madeline and Kiara emerge from the dressing room. Oh, oh, that... That color was not necessarily a good choice with her skin tone, because from a distance, that doesn't look like she's wearing anything. How do we look? I, I mean, I know that it kind of basically matches her hair, but... Mm, mm. <gasps> oh, you both look radiant! Literally! Oh, see, now it looks really good on Kiara. That actually looks really nice with her skin. Merci beaucoup. So sorry, everyone who speaks French. I can't wait to see us all dressed up together. Yes, we'll look better, even better, when everyone is dressed, won't we? Anna DeLuca is sure to adore it. Is she just going to be following us around all night? I'm really confused why we're so fixated on Anna DeLuca. This is so odd. Oh, Kira, I found a dress you absolutely have to try on. <sighs> Just as Hannah hands you a sleek gold number, you hear Justin's voice through the earpiece. Shut up, Justin. I don't need to hear this from you while I'm getting ready to change. <clears throat> I suggest you go for it. The press will eat it up. Okay. Don't stand out. Outshine. All right. Cool. Okay. I'll try it on. Um... That's not flattering. That... Hmm... It's, it's that same color. So clearly they're, like, trying to go for everyone being the same color, except for Hannah, who's going to be silver, I guess? And maybe Penelope. We haven't seen what Penelope's gonna put on yet. Um, but that is very expensive. And that is not very flattering at all. Like... Look, look at look at what it does to like our whole body. I'm gonna smallify it here. Yeah, no, no that that makes our that makes our rise of the hips look like we're like we've got like a 12 mile rise there. Um, not not a particular fan there. No. Or we can show our sweet side with this cute dress. Yeah, well, you know what? I know, just dunk your hair in glitter. We'll be fine. Yeah, it is. It's a bad color. If if we'd have been not white, if we'd have picked an avatar that was not white, it would look that color would look better on us. I think this dress is fine. I don't want to steal Madeline's thunder. I think I will go and like pick our red dress again though. I am hardly concerned with the possibility of you outshining me. Okay, sure. What I am concerned with is your inability to follow simple direction. Yeah, bitch, shut up. I don't care. I think you look great, Kira. You're goddamn right I do, Hannah. Thank you. Penelope, was something about my party theme unclear to you? Why aren't you dressed? Is Penelope not going to dress either? I waited too long to call about the reservation, and they didn't have anything metallic left in my size. Oh, see? Now, now I'm in solidarity with Penelope. Okay, I feel a little better. I can hardly find this surprising, but I do find it extremely disappointing. You know what, bitch? Shut up! 
I realize this is technically the night when everything's about you, but God. The night is still young, Madeline. We'll have lots of fun. <clears throat> Perhaps. We don't already have a metallic dress, really. Um, but we do have that, like, long slinky red dress, which I think is more... is more fitting than the petal pink dress. Or we could literally wear our old bridesmaid's dress, which is what I assume that blue number was. Let's head to my event now. We don't want to be late for the photo shoot with Trend Magazine. I just have to pay for your dress, Madeline. It's my gift. And there's not even a poodle on it. I guess I should be grateful. No, you should be grateful, Madeline. Stop being a bitch. Is it going to let us change? No? Am I going to have to go with that? I'm not going to be mad if I have to go with that dress. I just would rather change. <gasps> this is my chance to look at Penelope's credit card. I should offer to go with her, sneak up behind her, or ask her to hold Oliver. Um, offering to go with her is the most obvious option, really, because... Um, yeah. You can just be like, oh, hey, I'll go with you, and then literally just look at her card when she takes it out. Want some company, Penelope? That would be really nice, actually. Aw, okay. You accompany Penelope to the counter, and the cashier rings up the dress. It's really kind of you to buy Madeline's dress for her. Yeah, exactly. Penel Penelope isn't wearing metallic because her, um, there wasn't a metallic dress left in her size. So, yeah. We're, hel we're, we're helping Penelope avoid standing out. So, yeah. Oh, um, sure. Anything to get on her good side. Penelope pulls her card out of her wallet and you crane your neck to get a good look at the number 2302. So, what, what were we looking for? 6547? I think it was. I think so, yeah. Which isn't a match. Alright. There was a little point there, but I didn't really see what it was. One down, three to go. I assume it's like an investigation point or something. Penelope, Kira, let's not keep Anna DeLuca waiting. My god, do you have to last name her all the time? Good grief. Penelope rushes to the door after Madeline. You follow. With Oliver! See, we, we probably got Oliver a sparkly collar, so Oliver matches. Yeah, I'm going with that. A short limo ride brings you to the studio Trend magazine secured for the press event. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Ms. DeLuca. I am so pleased that Lady Kiara was able to arrange this event. I was elated when Kiara's mother called me. I can't refuse an old friend a little favor. Yeah, especially when it gets you a front page story, am I right? Let's begin with a photo shoot for the feature, shall we? You're looking marvelous. Anna positions your group in front of several cameras. <clears throat> Use that dog. You'll get a lot of mileage out of the little guy. Yeah, see, we've got Oliver. Oliver Oliver is our ace in the hole. Mm -hmm. A photographer holds out a hand, counting down from three. On one, you... So this is probably going to be a timed choice. Oh, no, Okay. Pose with Madeline, Hannah, or Oliver. Well, we were cho we were told to push Oliver, so we're going to pose with Oliver. The flash goes off as the photographer takes the picture. Arf! Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't. <gasps> what an impressive doggy! Yeah, you like him. Everybody likes Oliver. <gasps> That's my Oliver. You're naturals. Yeah, bitch. Time for a few questions. Contest Madeline, tell me, 
Why do you allow Lady Kira at court after everything that has happened? Well, because Shamar kind of, like, low-key is miserable whenever she's not around, and therefore I'm miserable because I have to live with him, so there's that. Honestly, it's water under the bridge. Really? The scandal? The pictures? None of that concerns you? Well, the pictures were of us with another man, so I'm not sure why they think it should concern Madeline, apart from the fact that, like, a scandal even exists. So, like, if Madeline says the scandal isn't a big deal, then it's not a big deal. Technically. Uh, to be frank, the way the press has treated Lady Kira and dragged her name through the mud is shameful. And furthermore, where is the ire directed at Tariq? The media has been conspicuously silent on his role in the whole ordeal. Ooh, Madeline is being sneaky. Wouldn't Cordonia be better served if the focus were on the bright future King Shamar and I are building for our people? Well, it would, but the media loves a scandal. You have given me a lot to think about, Contest Madeline. Yeah, mull on that part about Tariq for a little while. As Anna turns to ask, ask Kiara a question, you find yourself with Madeline. I didn't expect that. I don't expect you to believe me, but it wasn't just for show. I meant what I said. Really? We can say thank you, or I thought you just saw me as the court jester. Now, let's, let's be respectful. Let's say thank you. Please, I didn't do it for you. That's just honestly how I feel. Hmm, does Madeline know how to be honest about her feelings? I'm not really sure. A word of advice? Oh dear. Always tell the press your motives are in support of King Shamar or of Cordonia. The moment you seem to do something for yourself, they will dismiss you as selfish or arrogant. Hmm, this is actually true. After all, a woman sh ought to know her place. Woo. Okay. You can either wield that weapon, or let them use it against you. Madeline's logic is a bit twisted, but there is truth in what she says. It might serve you to play into the media's expectations. It's true. Your turn, Lady Kira. Oh dear, they're probably going to time me. Okay. What do you think of our queen-to-be? Remember, this is Madeline's day. Yes, I know. Don't be too hard on her, or they'll turn on you like the wolves they are. I think she's the best thing to happen to Cordonia since apples. <laughs> I hope. I'm not sure I follow. You know, she thinks she's so great, but we know. Oh, oh god, what did we- No! What exactly are you saying about apples? Never mind. Wow, we suck! Holy shit, okay. Yes, let's quit while we're not too far behind. Whew. Okay, that was evidently the wrong choice. Cool. That'll be all. Oh, do you bring your dog in for a shoot sometime? Ruff, ruff. He sure knows how to work a camera. Ruff. <laughs> Time to go see what Lady Kira has planned for the evening. Chop, chop, ladies. That's a wrap. You've finished your public appearance for the evening. I don't need to tell you how to enjoy yourself at a party. No, but we're on a rooftop, so we're going to be photographed. It's inevitable. Over and out. Ugh.
You arrive at the venue and find the VIP booth just in reserved. Alors, this is a club. Uh, what do you mean? It's so exciting. Loud music, fun drinks, men everywhere. <laughs> Penelope has her priorities. Wait, have you never been to a club before? Probably not. No. Oh yeah, Apple mentioned, take a drink. Yeah, you're right. Totally missed that. I was too busy being mad at the fact that it wasn't the right choice. Like, Cordonia's economy is based on apples, so like I actually figured that was a good choice. I have a feeling that even if we'd have picked the other good option, that it probably wouldn't have come out that great, but whatever. Mm, not exactly. We don't all have the luxury of engaging in such gauche behavior, Lady Kira. Oh my god, Madeline. Ah, well, this is gonna be fun. Prepare yourselves, ladies. We are in for a big night. The group settles in, and you notice Kiara sitting a bit apart from the others. Remember, we're apparently suspicious of her. This could be my opportunity to find out if the culprit is Kiara. Hey, Kiara, can I see your credit card real quick? Hey, Kiara. Oui? Can I help you? Well, actually, you can. Can I? Oh my god, we're just gonna do it! Holy shit, I was kidding, y'all. Can I see your credit card? What? No, why? Because we can say, I don't have mine and it's time for shots. Um, I want to know your last name. Or, I heard you have the legendary titanium exclusive card and I have, oh, I have to see it. Hmm. I want to know your last name is stupid. We could just ask her. So we're between shots or the titanium exclusive card. Um, if she doesn't have the titanium exclusive card, she's not going to show it to us. So we're going to go with, I don't have mine and it's time for shots. Ugh. You're worse than Penelope. I'm surrounded by idiots. Yeah, well, we'll pay you back. Kiara rifles in her purse until she finds her wallet. She shoves her credit card at you, and you see that the last four digits are 8914. Not a match. Oh, wait! I just remembered. I put it in a different pocket in my bag. Oh, all good. You push the card back into Kiara's hand. Okay, that was clumsy, but it worked. Ahem! Well, 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 look what we have here. Yeah, Olivia, I need to see your credit card. Olivia? Just in case. What are you doing here? Surprised to see me? Yes, because we were supposed to have security. Perhaps that's because I wasn't invited. Yeah, well, you're not Madame de Pompadour. Nonsense! You're welcome to join us. I simply didn't think you were still up for the rigors of court. Ooh, that's a dig. Oh, that's totally rival sneering, by the way. Take a drink. Ooh. Actually, just take a gulp, because there's been, you know, there's been plenty of sneering going around. As Olivia takes a seat, you notice Madeline's hand clutching her gold purse close to her side. Hmm. I have to figure out a way to get into that bag and see her card. <laughs> We're gonna get kicked out of court, y'all. I'm going to run to the ladies' room. I expect champagne on the table when I return. Oh, I can hold your purse while you're gone. And why would I need you to do that? I don't know. Where are you going to set it? Because we can say that place is covered with germs. You might lose it. Or this is a thing girls do for each other when they're friends. Ooh. Um, 
she's not going to buy the, you know, you might lose it part. So it's either this place is covered with germs or friends. I don't think she's going to buy the friends angle. So because that place is covered with germs. True enough. Kiara, come. You'll wait outside and hold my bag. Fuck! That was apparently the wrong choice. After all, I'm not going to just leave it here. Oui, Madeline. Either that or we're not actually supposed to find out her credit card number right now, which is fine. As Madeline and Kiara leave, you notice Olivia eyeing you suspiciously. I guess I'll go get the drinks? Penelope rifles through her bag. <gasps> Where is it? Uh-oh, this is going to look bad. Where's what? My card! I must have left it at the shop when I bought Madeline's dress. Not to worry. The first round is on me. Oh, so maybe we're trading finding out Madeline's number for Olivia's? I don't know. Ki Kira! Come help me fetch the drinks. I'll need help carrying them back. Uh, sure. You follow Olivia toward the bar. What is that? She points at Oliver, who, who she's apparently just now noticed, who cocks his head and pants back at her, tongue lolling. So cute! What did you look at the face? He's a little club puppy. Let me guess, you're a cat person? I prefer my animals on a plate. Oh god. It's awful. <gasps> oh, look at the face! Poor Oliver. Oh, would you love what the face? You arrive at the bar, and Olivia turns to the bartender to order. Two bottles of champagne and six glasses, please. What are you up to, Kira? Mm, what do you mean? I don't think we're very good at duplicity, so this is going to be good. Don't play dumb. I heard you talking to Kiara when I was walking up, and I saw you trying to get Madeline's purse from her. You caught me, Olivia. I'm literally trying to steal everyone's credit card numbers. You're trying to look at everyone's credit cards. Okay. I... Uh... Oh, please, don't play dumb. It demeans us both. Here, go through my bag. Maybe that will prove to you that you can trust me. Olivia, we can say, I'll take you up on that, or I trust you, I don't need to look. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. Because, like, she's gonna have to take out her credit card, and, you know, we're presuming, I suppose, that everyone only ever has one credit card, which... I think I'm the only person I know who has only one credit card, and even then I still have a debit card. Um, so, I take you up on that, or is she going to be pissed if we do? I guess it doesn't really matter, because we've probably gotten as much information out of her as we can. So... Hmm... I kind of don't want to piss her off, though. Let's not piss her off. I trust you. I don't need to look. Really? You trust me? Why? Because I poured my heart out to you and offered you my purse? No, because you actually don't have any motive anymore. Kira, I'm trying to like you, but you've got to stop doing extremely dumb things. You're so lucky you have me to help you. Okay, well, you know what? Good, you feel needed. Help me, Olivia. We can say, I'm better off working alone, or you're right, we need each other. No, see, now now I'm actually playing her like a fiddle. She feels like she's needed, like she's the smart one in the relationship. So, yeah, actually, no, this is working in my favor. Golly, okay. Also, she's been sneering at us to so take a drink. 
I think she's kind of to the point where it's kind of playful ribbing, but still, doesn't stop Drake from being an asshole. You're right, we need each other. Let's be clear, you need me. I'm regretting this already. Just get everyone dancing. I'll do the rest. She doesn't know, like, what numbers we're looking for, so she's not gonna have a reason to try to, like, change any one person's number unless she knows, um, unless she knows who's paid us, who's paid the photographer already, so. In which case, we'd be screwed, because that would mean that she'd already dumped her card or something. Yeah, exactly. So few people only have one card. So, yeah. And besides, I'm still of the mindset that if this person was any kind of smart, they used a prepaid card and dumped it. The bartender returns with the champagne, and you help Olivia carry it back to the other ladies. Woo! Time for the bubbly! <gasps> Pass them over here! So we pour the champagne... You pour a glass and offer it to Penelope, but Madeline snatches it as she returns to the table. Oops. <gasps> Poor Penelope. Delightful. Now what? Let's start with, we can go with shots, flirting, or dancing. Olivia told us to get them dancing, so let's start with dancing. Time to get out on the dance floor. <gasps> we can't just leave the champagne. Yeah, we can. We paid for security. <gasps> Good point. So we're just gonna we're just gonna slam it back, I guess. All right, you down the rest of your glass. The other ladies giggle and follow suit before allowing you to lead them to the poolside dance floor. This is asking for disaster. We're in very expensive dresses in proximity to chlorinated water. Ooh, ooh, snazzy music. Okay. Your group joins the throng of bodies bobbing and swaying to the beat. This could be my chance to get Hannah alone. I should... We can go wild on the dance floor, steal a dance with Hannah, or try to look at Hannah's card. Do any of us honestly believe that Hannah's the one who paid the photographer? No, we're going to steal a dance with Hannah. Aren't you coming? This was your idea. Only if I can dance with you. I know they're probably going to give us a romance point for this, but to, but to be perfectly honest, I dance with my female friends at weddings. So, what? Hannah smiles and takes your hand, pulling your bodies together. You glance around for the other ladies, but the crowd obscures them from view. You wrap a hand around Hannah's waist and sync your movements with hers, swaying with the music. Yep, see, romance point. We should do this more often. Hmm, standing up or, or not. <laughs> you won't get any argument from me. You lead Hannah into a twirl as the others come back into view. Even Madeline seems to be losing herself to the music. Hmm, good. Also, they all just slammed back an entire flute of champagne, so that's going to hit here in a few minutes. The ladies begin to pair off with nearby men. Olivia shoots you a significant look as Kiara and Penelope find partners. This must be Olivia's plan to help me get Madeline's card. Olivia begins to move erratically, as though her single glass of champagne had been an entire bottle. She stumbles toward Madeline. Oh, oh, oh Miss Nady Laddie! <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean... Uh, Baroness Maddie. <laughs> this is delightful. Drunk already, are we, Olivia? I'm not drunk, you're drunk. You! Uh -huh. Olivia moves to shove Madeline, but stumbles, catching herself on Madeline's bag and sending the co Madeline's arm and sending the contents of her bag flying. Her credit card slips out and goes skidding across the floor. Okay, I wonder if we've got a time choice coming up. I should get the card. Okay. Thinking fast, you dive for the card and quickly read the number on the front. You read 7749. Not a match. 
What? Ugh, Olivia, you are an embarrassment to Cordonia and to yourself. Where are we, by the way? Oh, we're in Italy still. Okay. Have you no sense of decorum whatsoever? She, a little bit. <laughs> Whatever, Maddie. Here, Madeline. You hold the card out to her, and she quickly shoves it back into her bag, along with the other escaped contents. Thank you, Kira. At least someone here has managed to retain control of herself. Madeline traipses off toward a man dancing nearby. Olivia smirks at you. She don't give a shit, apparently. She feels she has, like, no reason to maintain a standing at court anymore, so she's just like, the hell with it. I love it. You're welcome. Olivia dances her way over to you. So, how did you do? Well... I didn't see all the cards, so I still can't say for sure who did it. Uh, we eliminated the top three, because, like, other- basically the only ones that we haven't seen are Olivia and Hannah. So, like I said, Olivia really doesn't have motive at this point, and Hannah honestly doesn't have that much motive at this point, and I honestly don't believe it's Hannah, so... You only investigated the ladies at this party. It could be f literally any other random lady at court. Not helpful. See, I feel like if we'd have seen everybody's, then we would have seen that none of them matched, and Olivia probably would have said that same thing. What's not helpful is ignoring the facts. This is only a little setback. See, I told you it wouldn't be this easy. I'm not going to let your lack of imagination stop this investigation in its tracks. We will find the culprit. And in the meantime, we might as well enjoy the party. It's true. Several songs and several drinks later, you accompany the other ladies back to your booth. Everyone is out of breath from dancing. And by this point, I have probably pulled like three guys' hands off my ass because people don't know what boundaries are. Kiara, I didn't know that you were such a good dancer. Merci, me. I didn't either. A servant comes around with a tray and offers the table fresh champagne. Hell yeah. <gasps> Ooh, do a toast. By the way, who's been watching Oliver? A toast? All right, to, we can say Madeline, the future, or alcohol. It's Madeline's night. It's supposed to be Madeline. Let's do Madeline. <gasps> to Madeline! How many times do I have to say this? To Madeline! Oh, stop. I'll blush. Yeah, you're already blushing. How much alcohol have we had? Oh, we wouldn't want that, would we? Ow! What a little, little corgi howl. Sounds like Oliver agrees. Puppy. The rest of the ladies join the chorus, raising their glasses. Everyone drinks. Selfie time! Okay, see? Yes, they have, like, this culture exists in Cordonia. Ha, I feel vindicated. All of book one acted like it didn't. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, big group hug! No, we should be prim and proper. Or something classy, like clinking our champagne glasses together. Um, God. Do I go with Hannah's idea, or do I go with Madeline's? Because we're kind of trying to stay on Madeline's good side, but also Hannah. Um... <sighs> Technically, it's Madeline's night, so we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go with Madeline. Sorry, Hannah. Everyone assembles with Madeline in the center. Oliver wiggles his way into the shot. Yes, he does. <laughs> he gives you so cute. He's so happy. You snap the pick. Take a look. You pass the photo around. 
When it reaches Madeline, she smiles. I must say, you are all a compliment to my elegance and grace in this picture. It will make a wonderful memento. Is everyone ready for some dessert? Ooh, that's right, we're going to a chocolate shop. <gasps> dessert? Come on. Okay, well, apparently it's not going to load the text, but it is Hannah saying, it's my part of the evening, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. There, it finally goes. Does dessert have alcohol, too? <laughs> Penelope's going to be on the floor. Penelope, I hadn't taken you for a lush. However, I am intrigued to see what Lady Hannah has planned for the evening. Let's be off. Here we are. I'm sorry I forgot the roses. Hannah, we've explained this to you. It's not that kind of party. How very sweet. Is everyone staying or are you going to eliminate someone now? I wasn't sure how much chocolate to make. Hannah, Hannah, we had this conversation. Honey, honey. This is your activity? My date, yes. Don't you like it? Are you trying to kill me, Hannah? Uh-oh, she's allergic, isn't she? Oh no. Oh no! What? Any lady of in waiting of mine should know that I'm allergic to chocolate. Oh shit. That does seem like important information. <gasps> oh my goodness, Madeline, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. This is simply unacceptable. Hannah, I'm forced to strongly reconsider your place in my court. Holy shit, bitch, back off. The woman has, like, no access to technology when she's at home. This sounds like something we ought to be, like, coming down on our parents for, honestly, because that's their job, apparently. An error such as this could leave Cordonia without a queen. Um, n hmm. Honestly, it's far too much of a risk for me to even be here. I need to leave at once. Okay, well, allergies are no joke, so yeah, let's all go, but holy crap. Eww. Let's find somewhere sans chocolat to cap off the evening. Hannah, and perhaps it's best if you don't. It's perhaps it's best you don't join us. Whoa, bitch. Poor Hannah. Oh no. Madeline, Kiara, and Penelope exit the shop. Hannah is on the verge of tears. I just... <laughs> I thought it would be a good gift. It would have been a good gift if she wasn't allergic. Hannah, we can say you didn't know, or Madeline doesn't deserve such a nice gift. Ooh. Honestly, the... Hmm. Like, okay, I know I have a lot of allergies. But... To, like, to literally go off on someone like that for something they didn't know. And on, also, like, when you're walking through the door, if you haven't figured out that's where we're going and you can't go, oh my god, I'm sorry, like, that place is full of chocolate, I can't go inside because I'm deathly allergic. Like, making a scene that way, ooh. But like I, you know, like, I also don't want to trivialize the fact that, like, Madeline, apparently, she claims to have a very dangerous allergy. Now, we can debate all day long whether she actually does, but, um, yeah, Madeline doesn't deserve such a nice gift. <laughs> I don't know about that. One bite might have solved a lot of problems for us. Holy shit! Take a drink! Just because, oh my god, Olivia just low-key suggested assassination. Wow. Okay. <sighs> Not now, Olivia. <sighs> this is a disaster. Eh. Chocolate allergy or not, Madeline didn't need to treat you that way. You deserve better. 
Hannah sighs and looks around at the shop. I guess I should clean this up. You watch as she picks up a platter holding mugs of hot chocolate. She attempts to wipe her watery tears with one hand and fumbles the tray, spilling the drinks down her dress. Oh my god, they're not that hot, are they? Oh, poor Hannah. I'm not worried about the dress, I'm worried about Hannah and, like, her safety. <gasps> Everyone gasps! She bursts into tears. Oh my god, are you hurt? <laughs> this is... This is step zero. Are you hurt, Hannah? Oh, Hannah. <sighs> now I've ruined my dress. Can this evening get any worse? Oh, honey, I am sure dry cleaners have had to take way worse out of much more delicate fabrics. <laughs> You'll be fine. The, the evening can get worse. You could start your period. I just... I worked really hard on this. We were gonna do- we were gonna eat fondue and do blind chocolate tasting. I even learned a special dessert pretzel recipe. My parents are going to be so disappointed when they hear how big a failure it all was. Yeah, well, your parents, who isolated you entirely as soon as you got back from court, kind of had a responsibility to make sure that you knew stuff like this going in. Assuming that Madeline didn't make it up just to be an asshole. Which... I wouldn't put it past Madeline. So, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to hear shit about your parents being pissed at you because I will end them. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we invite Drake and Maxwell and we can have our own chocolate party? You can get changed and then we'll do all the activities you planned. And we'll have a lot more fun than if we were doing them with Madeline. This is true. Plus, I bet some quality time with Oliver will cheer you up. Oh my god, yes it would. Woof! We just have to be careful that Oliver doesn't eat any of the chocolate because chocolate is bad for dogs. Okay? Okay. There is no problem puppy cuddles can't solve. Mm, not true if you're allergic to dogs. <laughs> Oliver is ready for duty. Oh, I don't want to disturb Drake and Maxwell. <laughs> Maybe Olivia was the assassin we needed all along. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm concerned now. You know what? No, disturb Drake and Maxwell. You're going to make me pay for it. I know you are, but I'm going to disturb Drake and Maxwell. <sighs> it's okay. It was a dumb idea anyway. No, it was not, Hannah. It was a wonderful idea. What do you do? We do a fondue party with our friends. We're not going to call it night. We're gonna make Hannah feel better. You really think Maxwell won't drop everything for a chocolate party? Drake will be a hard sell, but we did smooch him last time, so he'll probably show up. And Drake isn't exactly one to turn down delicious free food. They don't tell him it's chocolate. Okay, you have a point there. Do you want to join us, Olivia? There's more than enough chocolate. I... <laughs> Olivia's probably never actually been invited to anything. I suppose I could spare an hour. Yeah. We're... Yeah. Hannah, we can say that's a great idea, the more the merrier, or Olivia will just sour the mood. No, don't be a bitch. That's a great idea. The more the merrier. See, yeah, because we got a... We got, like, a relationship, a friendship point with Olivia, so she's all smiles. Yeah. This doesn't mean I'm going to join your little misfit club. No, Olivia, you've already established yourself as a misfit in this book. It's it's done. It's done. You're one of us. One of us. I wouldn't dare to presume. Then it's settled. I'll call the guys. Drake and Maxwell arrive at the chocolate shop just as Hannah finishes changing her dress, which she brought in the TARDIS, I guess. I don't know. <gasps> chocolate party! Yeah, Maxwell's here for it. This might be my favorite kind of party. <laughs> Maxwell, are we really trying to pretend you're Sizhet at this point? Every party is your favorite kind of party, Maxwell. 
you're not wrong. <laughs> Thank you for coming, guys. I hope you weren't already busy. Nothing is more important to me than chocolate entering my bloodstream. Yeah, this is a fair point. Except maybe helping my friends. And you know Drake didn't have anything better to do. Wow, Olivia. God, take a drink. She is still our rival. Mean. What do you do all day when you're not complaining about the nobility while benefiting from Shamar's hospitality? Um, I have a really inappropriate thing to say, but instead I'll just say, think about Kira. I'm not going to say what he's doing while he's thinking about us. Hey, I do... stuff. <sighs> okay, dude. Why are you here anyway? Shouldn't you be licking off licking Madeline's boot? Hey, you know what, Drake? Actually, all three of us girls are supposed to be off licking Madeline's boot, but Madeline burned her bridge for the night. Hey, we can say, try. can we try to keep it civil for Hannah's sake? Or, that's a good point. Why did you stay? Um, well, we kind of, we know, the, like, her story of why she stayed, which was to find out who the blackmailer is. So can we try to keep it civil for Hannah's sake? <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Whatever. My god, they're going to be the ones who end up together, aren't they? Blah. That's not going to be a good relationship. I think I'll take you up on those corgi cuddles now, Kira. Corgi cuddles. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> I think Oliver would be happy to oblige. Oliver wiggles his way into Hannah's arms and gives her face a few licks. Doll. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> I think he likes you. Woof. I can't believe I messed up so badly. Such a failure. No, your parents are the failures for not prepping you properly. Hannah, don't beat yourself up. Yeah, everyone makes mistakes sometimes. Have I ever told you about the time I, we can say, dumped a plate of ribs in a customer's lap, called my friend's brother the wrong name for a whole year, or wore white after Labor Day? Um, hmm, it's the closest parallel to what she's just experienced. Let's go with, let's go with called my friend's brother the wrong name for a whole year. I kind of want to hear this story. You did? I did. <laughs> when we were introduced, I thought my friend called him Quentin. So, I called him Quentin. I thought it was a little weird when it took a few tries calling his name before he would answer. I figured maybe he had bad hearing or something. We didn't talk much, just said hi in between classes, so I didn't really hear anyone else say his name. Until about a year later when we had a class together and the teacher called him Bruce. Bruce? How did you get to Quentin from Bruce? I, we may never know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how you get there either. Hey, wasn't I promised fondue? Where's the fondue? Like, literally right in front of you, Maxwell. Maxwell, don't you know impatience is a major fondant? Heh heh heh. Oh my god. We're so punny. Over here. Hannah leads you to a table with a tower of melted chocolate in the center of the shop. I'll go get the dipping options. Just a second. There'd better be marshmallows. Hannah disappears behind a counter for a moment, then pops up with a plate of decadent desserts, which she offers to you. Woohoo! So we can peruse the fondue tray, which looks to be filled mostly with cheese and fruit. Maybe some bread. Maybe that's bread. Hannah, this looks amazing. Take one. All right, so what, what do we pick? What do we pick? We've got pretzels. 
I guess. Are these like the special dessert pretzels? I don't know. We've got a strawberry or we've got pound cake. Mm, let's go with the strawberries. Chocolate covered strawberries sounds nice. You pluck a strawberry off the tray and plunge it into the chocolate, covering it with an even layer before taking a bite. Mmm. Oliver jumps at Hannah's leg, eyes wide and pleading. No, don't don't give him chocolate. You can't give him chocolate. I think strawberries are also bad for dogs too, but I might be wrong about that. Mmm. Oh, the, the eyes, the sad eyes. Don't do it. None for you, little guy. Okay, like he could he could have probably a piece of cake. My turn. Well, if you think Kira's story is bad, wait until you hear my greatest mistake. Ooh, this I gotta hear. This is gonna be good. When we were kids, Shamar and I would play hide and seek in the palace. One time, I was hiding and Shamar was seeking, and I had the best hiding spot ever. It was the bottom of an old laundry chute that must have been forgotten about for decades. So I waited, and I waited, and I kept waiting for hours. <laughs> you would be competitive at hide and seek. Yeah, yeah, he would, Drake. Manthrax Walker. I ended up falling asleep in the laundry chute, and I only woke up when the palace guard found me the next day. <laughs> oh my god, it took them an entire day. Y'all, palace guard needs to step up their game. No! Yup. Turns out when Shamar couldn't find me, he thought something terrible might have happened. Shamar... Shamar needs so much therapy for, like, paranoia and separation issues at this point, with all the stuff that has happened like this. Like, oh my god. The guard turned the palace upside down trying to find me and kept anyone from coming or going. You caused the great lockdown? Legendary. <laughs> we got in so much trouble, they made hide-and-seek forbidden anywhere on palace grounds. All those poor children who will never get to play because of you. What about you, Maxwell? What's your big mistake story? Um, this is gonna be awkward. <laughs> you know me. My life is just a series of mistakes, really. What about all those dance-offs you've won? Ask Bertrand whether those were successes or mistakes. Come on, Maxwell. I bet you have a particularly embarrassing moment you could share. <sighs> all right, all right. Let me think. Ooh, I've got one. I used to have a crush on a noble girl who shall remain unnamed for her own protection. Uh-oh. I didn't know how to tell her, but... I just had to express all the emotions bubbling up inside me. So I wrote the most heartfelt and romantic note my 12-year-old self could muster. Oh no. <gasps> oh no. You know, about her songbird voice and effulgent smile. I think I said that right. Effulgent? No one understands my poetic heart. Anyway, I gave her the note on Valentine's Day, and she read it to everyone. I was mortified. Is this what you do? Just sitting around telling each other how pathetic you are. Oh, shut up, Olivia. We're cheering each other up. We can say, it's called having friends, you should try it. Or, it's nice to have your friends reassure you, give it a shot. Let's be nice. It's nice to have your friends reassure you, give it a shot. Uh, me? Yeah, you have nothing to lose at this point, Olivia. Yeah, tell us about a time you did something embarrassing. Uh, this is obviously some kind of trick, and I'm not going to fall for it. Okay, whatever. We won't make fun of you, promise. Yet, yeah, Drake, we won't make fun of her, right? Ugh. 
I don't promise anything. No, Drake, you're gonna promise. You and Hannah both scowl at Drake. <laughs> he slumps. <laughs> Fine, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I I can't say I ever fell asleep during hide-and-seek as a kid, but yeah, I can see where it's really easy to do if you find a good spot. Hmm, sorry, but I honestly can't think of anything even nearly as embarrassing as your pitiful stories. Okay, sure. We'll wear you down someday. Thanks, you guys. I do feel a bit better now. See? There's nothing some sweet treats with your friends can't fix. Are you sure about that? Well... What? What about a fondue fight? Oh my god, Maxwell, no! Maxwell grabs a handful of chocolate-covered pound cake and lobs it right at Drake. Maxwell, what are you doing? He has already changed clothes once tonight, you jerk! <laughs> Drake just kind of stands there, I guess. Maxwell! We can say, how dare you waste precious chocolate? <laughs> or, I'm gonna get you next. No, he's he started this fight. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna get you next. Hi there, Emily Miku Dance 12. Well, we're 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 hanging out having plenty of fun at a at a fondue fight right now, so you know, that's how our night is going. You reach for the plate of treats, grasping for a sugary weapon to wield against Maxwell. Let's see, we've got more pound cake, we've got the pretzels, or we've got the strawberries. The pound cake, the pound cake holds liquid, y'all. You gotta go with the pound cake. Let's do this. Your hand finds the pound cake and you fling it at Maxwell. It meets his face with a satisfying smack. Not the face! Anything but the face! Hey, you, you yelled at us that we couldn't throw a drink in your face because your shirt was Gucci, so you better be glad I'm hitting you in the face. Take that! So you're on his side? <laughs> I see how it is. Yeah, I have this game on my phone too, which is which is why it is as small as it is on the screen. Um, and why the, the audio could be better. Because um, apparently getting Android audio to your Mac laptop is not very easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm on my own side. I have not heard of Teenage Drama Love Story app. That sounds like that's got a lot of harmful romance tropes in this, which, honestly, so does the royal romance. <laughs> Whoo, baby. You lob the next handful of fondue at Drake, who dodges your attack only to be hit by Olivia. Ooh, we got Olivia into this. Okay. Really? Yes, Drake, really. Apparently we've got this. What? I've studied the art of war. I never turned down an opportunity to practice my craft. Oh my god, she is an assassin. Y'all. Y'all. We found her. Drake, does that mean... <gasps> Team up! Oh my god. Battle of the Sexes? Let's do it! Is the... Is the game frozen on your side? I hope not. It says it's streaming just fine for me. If you insist... Yeah, hope... I hope it's moving. Let me... Let me know. Let me... Let me know if it's behaving. Just then, Maxwell volleys a ball of gooey cake at you. I should jump, freeze, or dodge, dodge. Oh yeah, it looks like it froze on you for quite a while. Ooh, sorry about that. Hopefully it's coming back. You successfully leap out of the way of the incoming projectile and lob a rebuttal back at Maxwell. Direct hit! I'm not sure I'm gonna make it! 
And yeah, my stream, my stream says it's fine. I'm not dropping any frames or anything. Okay, because like my internet lags a little bit too, so that's why I get a little concerned. So. I think we're winning. Sorry, that was me pausing. This is our chance. Hit him with everything we've got. You, Hannah, and Olivia grab at what remains of the platter as Drake and Maxwell dive behind a counter for cover. How much is Hannah gonna owe this place for like all the all the stuff? Whew. Alright. They've got us on the defensive. We have to strike now. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you think I'm funny. <laughs> Drake and Maxwell emerge, fists full of fondue-flavored fury. Oh, fondue-flavored. There's no specific flavor of fondue. It's cheese or chocolate. That's the only two types of fondue I've ever seen. Neither type I can have. Um, but what? Hmm. Fondue-flavored fury. That's a thing that is said. All right. I should finish it, slip or stop. We're going to finish it. Ugh. Stressful. You, Hannah, and Olivia pelt Drake and Maxwell, forcing them back into cover. Alas, we failed. <laughs> Poor Maxwell. Woo! We did it! Oh my god, Hannah, you're going to owe this place so much money. I'm so sorry. Maybe we'll clean up. Go team! Hey, thank you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. It was a really hard sell. Free chocolate with your friends? Sounds awful. I know, right, Maxwell? How many stories did I finish? So I have finished, in total, as far as series, I've only finished one completely. So I did not finish the Royal Romance. I got through book one and then stopped and then restarted it for the stream. And then on my own, I finished the entirety of the Endless Summer series, which is... Oh, oh, and I, and I finished the Crown and the Flame series. So I finished all told two, and then this would be my third if we play this through to the end on stream, which is my plan. So... Not all tonight, because, oh my goodness, that would be like a 36-hour stream. Free chocolate with your friends sounds awful. Still, it means a lot to me to know that I can count on you. Has it been freezing off and on? No. Maybe if I, like, slow down my rate of click-through, maybe it'll be happier. Of course, you can count on us. Anytime. Oh, that was too high. Anytime. It is getting late, though. We should probably head back to the train. Yeah, I'm getting tired. <laughs> after we've... After we've... Had how much alcohol at this, at this, um, at this club, danced like half the night, and now put ourselves through, uh-oh, I see like a total freeze. Hang on, we might be having a problem. Let me make sure it's not just me. Because it might just be my internet on this side and not actually affecting the stream. Doo, 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 doo. I'm still connected and I'm not dropping frames or anything, which is a good sign. Yep, yep, it is saying offline. Okay. Okay. 
Is it maybe gonna come back? Let's see. Nope, there we go. That says live. Okay. So you're all... So, Emily, you say you're almost done with the Royal Romance Book 3? That's cool. I haven't... Like I said, I haven't touched that one yet. So... Okay, so you've you've been getting the network error too. Okay, yeah, it still says I'm live on this side, so hopefully. Yeah, I haven't done the freshman. The high school thing isn't as isn't as interesting to me, but um, um I I tend to do. I tend to prefer more like the the fantasy or like um, action stuff, but I do write romance, and so that's why I started with the royal romance for the stream, because um, there's kind of like responsible and irresponsible ways to do romance, and the way that um, the way that a lot of romance is presented, uh, if if you know how to write it, is good. If you don't know how to write it, it's not, and it kind of seems like maybe the writers on this particular book um, need, need a little bit more education on what romance should really look like but um, yeah we'll 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 see by book three whether whether their writers have kind of cleaned up their act because so far in book two it's been kind of concerning honestly um, if you look back at my last stream chapter six we get into that. Uh, <laughs> it was, that was a trip. So, anyway, yeah, now that hopefully everything is behaving itself again, yeah, we're, we're thinking about calling it a night. It's getting, I'm getting pretty tired, she says. Everyone on the train train! Next stop, the train! Oh my god, Maxwell, why? Please never be a conductor. After a long walk back, you're a few blocks away from the train when a taxi stops just ahead. You hear a familiar voice from inside. Is that? <gasps> Choo-choo, party train! Yeah, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of episode Choose Your Story either, um... Play Choices was originally recommended to me actually by another romance writer, although it sounds like maybe this app has had some problems. Um, and some of it is probably some of the same stuff she... Some of the same stuff that she probably has problems with is probably some of the same stuff I have problems with. So <laughs> I'd, I'd be kind of interested to pick her brain, but we're not real good friends. We're just Twitter friends. So we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. I haven't slid into anybody's DMs. So, but yeah, oh, apparently, apparently Madeline has no sense of decorum now. This is delightful. Madeline, be quiet. Do you want someone to see you like this? Yes, yes, we very much want someone to see her like this. Please, yes. Madeline, Kiara, and Penelope tumble out of the taxi. She really didn't call like a limo or something? Like a fancy Uber? Really? This is probably written before there was Uber, or at least very broadly used, so. <laughs> Madeline's shoes are missing. Oh dear. Haha! <laughs> Too late. Oh, Olivia's loving this. Oh no. Oh, relax, it's just us. I better go before Madeline sees me. Well, Madeline's either gonna have completely forgotten, or she's gonna lose her shit, so, um. I'm cool with this either way, because if Madeline loses her shit and makes a gigantic public scene, that looks really bad for her. So, no, Hannah, stay. Please stay. Please stay, honey. We love you. I'll walk you back. Hey, no, Drake. We're gonna keep her here. We're gonna see what Madeline does. Well, I don't want to, like, push Hannah past her limits, I guess. That would be mean. But I really want Madeline to just make a gigantic fool of herself. So, yeah. Hannah and Drake continue toward the train, while you, Maxwell, and Olivia approach the drunken remains of the bachelorette party. 
Poor Hannah, so scared and sad. I wanted to see her pretty little face when I told her I'm not even allergic to chocolate. Whoa, take a drink. Take a gulp, because holy shit, Madeline. Hey, right, listen up, y'all. As someone with dietary restrictions and food allergies, now keep in mind, mine aren't the anaphylactic kind where, like, if I touch peanuts, I will, you know, die. Um, and we're not even 100% sure if I'm allergic to peanuts. We're going to find out. Um, you don't fucking lie about this because that trivializes allergies from which people actually can die. So, oh my god, I hope somebody heard this. I really do, because I want everyone to know that the future queen of Cordonia thinks that that's something funny to lie about. Because, oh my god. Uh, my next stream is scheduled for Friday at this time. I don't stream every day. Um, so, so yeah, oh my god, oh my god, Madeline. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I kind of wish Drake had heard it too, because I kind of have the feeling that Drake might actually punch Madeline in the face, which would probably result in him going to prison, but would be really satisfying to watch. Thank you, Risa. <laughs> You're probably closer to the, the cycle time than I am. You lied about an allergy to Hannah. We can say, why would you do that to her? You're disgusting. Or that's low for a future queen. Um, all of these are true, but we're going to hit her right where it counts. That's low for a future queen. The joy of being queen is that I don't have to explain myself to anyone, including you. Uh, <laughs> the public begs to differ, my darling. The public wants everything explained to them. What you do, what you wear, who you hang out with, um, what time of year you wear certain shoes. Everything is, is owed an explanation in their minds. So holy hell. I hope someone got this on video. I really do. You're not queen yet. Yeah, you're still technically only contests. But I still hold Hannah's fate in my hands. You are drunk off your ass right now, Madeline. The odds on you remembering any of this tomorrow are like zero. And you're going to have such a massive hangover because most of that was champagne. Between you and me... I just want to see what finally pushes her over the edge. Oh my god. And she's trivializing mental health. Okay, y'all. This isn't the least bit funny. Um, this is this is serious. We already know that Hannah has a history of abuse. Like, very, very recent. Like, she's still enduring abuse. Um, so yeah, to say that, like... Madeline's literally just playing a game with her. Like, I know people do this, but oh my god. Oh my god. This is something we're telling Shamar, right? Hey, Madeline's literally trying to break Hannah. Control your damn fiancé, please. Because if we're honestly, like, going to continue to be with him, he's got to show some kind of backbone and put his foot down somewhere. Holy crap. Okay. Everyone wants something. But the nice ones like Hannah don't have the decency to act like it. Ugh. So I like to have some fun. Everyone has a breaking point. I'll find hers. Oh, bitch. What? That's horrible. She's drunk, Kira. Maybe now isn't the best time. I have... <laughs> Olivia right now, I know that's her normal face. But Olivia right now literally looks like she has her phone palmed and is recording this whole thing. <laughs> that's the look that she has on her face. <laughs> is that like, yeah, no, I got this. The best time. Tonight was the best time. I got a drink named after me. Oh, God, okay. Hmm. Cool. <sighs> she named a drink after herself. Quel narcissique. I, I, I hope. 
same thing. It was on fire. Oh my God. What is my favorite color? Blue. No, wait. Ah! Sorry. Pink is a good color. Um, I, I'm kind of of the opinion that there really aren't a lot of bad colors. Do you, you need help getting her back? Uh, no, I just need to pay for this gross, dumb taxi. They take cards, right? Uh, they should. Yeah, but I thought you left your card at the dress shop. I have another one. Aha! Uh ha ha! -ha! <laughs> See? People do not just carry one card. Like, yeah, okay, all right. I feel vindicated. <gasps> you do? <laughs> I like that they put the, the foreboding music on. Was I right to suspect Penelope earlier in the stream? We'll find out. Choices does have really good music. Um, if you go on YouTube, you can actually search. They have a playlist that I think is literally all the music from the Choices games. And one of my friends actually found this when I got her interested in the app. And yeah, she found it. She's just like, oh my god, I love all this music. And yeah, with this music now, I'm having shades of uh, Endless Summer because this music featured pretty prominently in it. So, so yes, intrigue. Penelope has more than one credit card. It's not like multiple people do this. Uh, of course, for emergencies. <gasps> I have to get a look at that card. I see a timed choice coming up. Okay. I've never taken a taxi before. What do you do? Oh, cool. So we've got a totally legit reason. Oh, give me the card. I'll take care of it. Do I not have to choose? Okay. Uh-oh. I was right to suspect Penelope. Oh my god. I said Kiara earlier, like when they actually asked me, but no. Oh my god. Penelope hands you the card and you duck into the taxi, glancing at the number before handing it off to the driver. The last four digits are 6547. A match. Oh, thank you, Emily. I'm, I'm glad you find me nice and hilarious. <laughs> I am shocked. Shocked! It's not as if someone could have stolen her credit card number. Shocked! Penelope betrayed you. Oh, are we actually, like, saying that's that's actually what happened and we're not going to, like, keep spinning this? Okay. Keep playing to unravel the sinister plot against you. Remember, this is a romance. Yeah. So, that was a two-hour chapter, so I think we're going to stop there on this foreboding music. So, um... Once again, the next stream is going to be this Friday, same time, same place, 7 p.m. Central, over here on twitch.tv slash aromanticace. And we are going to find out, I suppose, if they're really serious that Penelope is the one who paid the photographer, um, and or whether, whether she acted alone. Because, you know, she, we're saying to unravel the sinister plot against me, which means that, you know, also we're, we're not very far into the book. <laughs> so it's, it's not like we're out of the woods yet. Um, but I really do hope we resolve this whole, like, Madame de Pompadour setup <laughs> with Shamar soon, because that's exhausting. I'm really glad that actually didn't factor into this episode at all. I kind of wonder if they realized at that point that maybe they should back off of it for, like, an episode or two. Um, I'm kind of interested to know what we do with the information that Madeline lied about this, um, about the allergy, because, um, 